Hey, what's going on guys? So, I did pick up something the other day from one of my buddies, Near Dog, and he hooked me up with a Sega Genesis, a Model 1. We're gonna crack it open to see exactly what version it is because I'm told, depending on the revision, the board could be a really good audio board or it could be really poor in the audio department or even, even worse, which would be being terrible in the video department. But either way, every Sega Genesis provides out RGB out, which, what came with it was this terrible RF. And if you remember RF, it was really, really bad back in the day. So what I ended up doing is I went over to Stone Age Gamer and I got myself one of these. It is a RGB SCART cable for the Sega Genesis. That way I can input it into my RetroTank 5X and then we can get some really, really clean clean video and audio out of it. It has a separate audio channel for the stereo audio and it's a skirt. It looks to be built really well. It's shielded so we're gonna find out exactly how well it actually does. I'm also gonna show off the controller that it came with. It came with one of these weird turbo pads that I've never seen before but apparently it's officially licensed by Sega and even has a part number from Sega. It's a little bit smaller than the original Sega Genesis controller but we're gonna try it out and see how it is. I only have one game for it, and the game that I have is a reproduction copy of Ghouls and Goose. I always get confused with Ghouls and Ghosts and Ghosts and Goblins, but this is the only one I have. We're gonna try it out and see what happens. I do plan on getting an EverDrive in the future. I just haven't had a chance to go ahead and do that. With all the holidays going on, everything going on, we've got Three Kings Day, and we also have Christmas. I do celebrate Three Kings Day. The kids are gonna enjoy it. And uh, th today is actually Three Kings Day Eve on the day that I'm actually recording it. So let me go ahead. I will hook up the Sega Genesis and we will check it out real quick. And then I will tear it down and look at the board that's in there. All righty. All right. So we're going to start off by taking out the six screws. They're all a Phillips head. We're going to try not to screw this up. Because uh, screwing up would mean losing all these screws and then not being able to close it. There we go. Now we're going to lift it up slowly because there's a wire for the LED. We're going to pull it out. I'm not really good at pulling out. I have four kids. <laughs> Alright. It's dirty as hell. So we're going to get this cleaned up shortly. But we're going to pop out the LED. And there's these two little clips. And boom. Good to go. All right, now we got a whole bunch of screws around this metal frame around here. All right, we got that off. We got a couple more screws to go and then the board will be free. But we want to get a little bit of a closer look. That Yamaha YM2612 chip. That's what gives us that lovely, lovely sound. Making sure all the capacitors are fine. No real good leaks or anything like that. There's a lot of dirt in here. I mean, I imagine this thing's never been opened. Yeah, look at this. This needs to be cleaned up. We're going to use some isopropyl alcohol. And we're going to use our brush to get all this dust out of there. I'm going to be careful not to screw this up or break anything on the inside. We're going to lift it out nice and gentle. I said gentle. Okay. Now let's clean the inside of this plastic. Now this one I won't be washing because all the stickers are on it. So we're just going to give it a nice brush out, clean it up, and then wipe it down when we're done. Move the screws out of the way. We don't want to lose those. I mean, the stickers are pretty damaged, but still, you know, it's cool to even keep the stickers, you know? All right. Now, here's where we screwed up. When I plugged it back in, that blew. I don't know what happened. I don't know how. But anyways, I went ahead and I actually replaced it with my really shitty soldering skills. You do not know how hard it was because I could barely see this thing. 
So here we go, we're nice and clean now. I'd love to give this a nice coat of wax to kind of clean it down and keep it nice and uh, scratch free because uh, it's got some deep scratches in there. If not, I might replace the shell. All right, so now we are plugged into the RetroTank 5X. And next you're going to see my Sega Genesis next to my Dreamcast, which will be featured in an upcoming video. So let's go ahead and let's get to gameplay. Alright, so we're going to try out this uh, Sega Genesis. It booted up just fine. Like, it sounds really good. And these insurrection cables were really easy to just pop in. Throw the one side to the audio, and then just keep it pushing. For some reason, I'm very partial to the Ghouls and Ghosts games. And Ghosts and Goblins. You know, the whole G&G &G series. And I, I believe that's because my dad really was a fan of this game. He loves Super Ghouls and Ghosts. That's the one that we had on Super Nintendo. But he also loved playing this one in the arcade. Along with the even older one that was made back in the early 80s and you know what the reason i like it is because it's balls to the wall hard extremely hard it doesn't pull any punches for you and for some reason i haven't been able to beat any of these goddamn games but we're gonna make that change with this original sega genesis that's why we're gonna deal with the jenny yeah, hopefully not die. I can do pretty decent until we get later on into the game. And by decent, I mean die a hell of a lot of times, but just keep going until I get frustrated and then angry, and then I shut it off and never play it again. But, uh, that doesn't happen very often. Except for when I just told you, you know? Fuck! Um. We're gonna pretend that didn't happen. We're gonna mulligan that. We're gonna mulligan that. We're gonna at least get this level through. Now, my buddy Near Dog is actually gonna let me use his Terra Onion Sega Genesis cartridge, which actually allows you to play Sega CD games, and I believe Sega 32X, which is pretty damn awesome. So I'm gonna take a look at that sometime next week. I am gonna let him borrow my Nintendo 64 EverDrive in exchange, and uh, he's gonna enjoy, oh, enjoy some games. Ooh, careful. We want to be careful there. Yes! He's dead. There's another plant. There! Ha <laughs> ha! Alright, now we've got the guy who loves to throw his head. Oh, wait, my bad. He shoots fireballs from his head. I don't know why I was thinking about Dynamite Heady. Which we might actually play. Yes! Wow, that was... That was almost too easy. Hmm. Let's let's beat this next level and we'll see if we can do it. We'll see if we can do it. So far this gets an A plus out of me. Uh, fucking turtles. Fuck those turtles. Uh not real life ones, just the ones in in game, damn it. Freaking armored tortoise. No! I disagree with that hitbox. I disagree with that. That should have not happened. Uh, no! Alright, that's it. Iframes! Glory be to the iframes! Uh, yes! No, 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 no! Uh, um. I blame the turtles. I blame all the turtles. So, so far so good with the Sega Genesis. We're going to be putting it through its paces sometime soon with that extra cartridge. I just wanted to play the one game that I do know how to play. And I know how to play it uh, apparently not good because I didn't play well for you guys. So, whatever. Sega Genesis is awesome. This is through the Retro Tank 5X. It looks pretty good. It sounds pretty good. You've got a, a bunch of different filters that we can choose from, but they don't really look well due to Twitch compression. But in person, they are absolutely fantastic. 
They've got a slot mask filter, one for aperture grill, a BVM filter, a PVM filter, the FV310, which I assume is some sort of PVM. Oh no! And then we freeze up at consumer one. Because for some reason, my capture card doesn't like it. So we're gonna switch to consumer two, and uh, it likes it uh, ever so slightly, but it also looks like crap due to compression. We've got an LCD filter, which we'll see what that looks like in a second. If anything ever actually boots, there we go. Doesn't look too good through the compression. But anyways, when you're streaming, you're not really going to use this stuff. When you're recording, you're not really going to use this stuff. I will try and upload this as 4K, so that way you can get a better look of how those filters did look at that very end. Um, well, I'm going to enjoy some Sega Genesis. I will chat with you guys later. We'll make more videos sometime this week. Wait, wait, wait! I forgot something! I forgot something! Don't forget to like and subscribe for more content! Something like that, because I'm sort of a YouTuber or something, whatever, blah 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 blah.